Good morning and thank you for being here today. On behalf of the team here in Navarra, Spain and in the Rural Development um, and Environment Department, we'd like to offer again a very warm welcome to this, the second day of the second LCA4 Regions Transnational Learning Journey. Um, for those of you whom I didn't meet yesterday, let me just briefly introduce myself again. Um, my name's David Rimes and I'm a language training consultant here in Navarra. And I'll be uh, moderating this session today and also tomorrow, Thursday. Okay. Today, our main focus is going to be on uh, LCA good practices on resource efficiency. Okay, we'll be learning about um, the experiences of the different partner regions um, here for today's session, armed with good practice examples ready to be exchanged and from which we hope you'll find inspiration for future regional action plans. At the end of the session, there'll be an opportunity to, to, to choose your favourite good practice. Okay, so let's have a look in a little more detail at the agenda for today. Um, first of all, we'll be hearing from the uh, from our external expert, Dr. Fritz Balkau again, um, and he'll be giving an, an overview and introduction to the LCA4 regions good practices um, under the title Sustainable Solutions. Um, following that, Yolanta uh, Davarjaniene will be talking about a comparative LCA for steel plate priming, um, and then we'll have Shaila. Oh, now this is this is a tough one for me. Kagangas, okay, talking about recycled soil material. Um, then awards more alkeba, more value from Elsa Nunes, who represents uh, Iradiare and um, the the Association of, of Regions Thimbal, uh, and then um, LEED protocol from Alexander Dacoma from the Lombardy region. Um, energy and resource efficiency in the hotel industry from Alvin Pinta. Um, and LCA of building components from Jakob Wojcic and the MCP carbon footprint, footprint calculation from Alvaro Miranda here in Pamplona. Okay, now you'll see there that there are seven um, good practice presentations in total, um, and we're going to take four uh, from Yolanta, Shaila, Elsa and Alessandro, and then we'll um, have the first of the question and answer sessions. And then in the second half of the morning, we'll be hearing about uh, three more, okay, the final three. Okay, uh, and then we'll have a second question and answer session. And then finally, um, as I mentioned before, we'll have a poll at the end, okay? Now, <clears throat> just a, a little more housekeeping from me before we get started on the topic of questions. There'll be questions all through the session uh, and you can type them into the Q&A box that you have open on your screen. Okay, um, and they'll be forwarded to me to present uh, to, to to forward orally to the to the panelists. Um, so it would be helpful if you could uh, say in your question uh, to whom it goes addressed, because it's not always immediately obvious. Okay, um, so that's the order of the day. Um, our first speaker again. It gives me great pleasure to introduce. Um, the external expert, Dr. Fritz Balkal, uh, he's an independent international advisor on sustainable development solutions. He's based in Paris, um, author, as I also said yesterday, of the, the book Life Cycle Approaches to Sustainable Regional Development. And during his time at the uh, within the UN Environment Program, he supervised programs in sustainable industrial development and environmental management. Uh, more recently, he's been working on effective procedures for life cycle management and sustainable supply chains and contributing to projects like, like this one that facilitate the uptake by regional organizations and intergovernmental institutions of life cycle approaches to sustainable development. Okay, well, so Fritz, when you're ready, if you'd like to open your microphone. Okay, yeah. Can you? Yes. And you're going to share your presentation. Am I online, David? Yes, you are. I can hear you perfectly. Fine. Good. It's working today. It's working. Well, th thanks for that introduction. And good morning, everyone. It's uh, I'm very pleased to be back uh, for the second session of the TLJ2. Uh, I think we learned a lot yesterday, and maybe we'll learn a little more today. 
before we go into the field visits tomorrow. Okay, uh, let me just say that uh, good practice is at the heart of the project, the LCA for Regents project. We're going to explore a little more this morning about what we actually mean by good practice and an overview of what everyone has been doing. We've collected a lot of good practices. Uh, let's see what it means and how they compare. Uh, yesterday, I should also mention that Sandra distributed a, an extra document which summarizes one good practice from each of the regions. Uh, thanks for sharing that with us, Sandra. Uh, I think it's available, made available to everyone. Uh, we should also remember that the good practices that have been submitted by the partners uh, can be found on Google Drive. I think that's where you've put your good practices and that's where we can see everyone else's as well. Okay, this first session of 10 minutes, we'll try to put all of your good practices into some sort of overall perspective and context of the project. Uh, and one thing we should do is analyze the good practices that have been received so far and to see what we can learn as we move forward. In particular, we need to see how these good practices lead to a learning experience and learning exchange experience. And this will be towards the end of my presentation, we'll come into that. Uh, more details of the individual good practices will of course come from the individual presenters, which you will hear shortly. Okay, let me move into a screen share. What's happening here? You're sharing your screen. Yeah, I can see your uh, your screen and you need to launch the PowerPoint now, Fritz. Yes, uh, I thought I've done that. Here we are. Oh. Okay, that's we are. perfect. That's we're wonderful, away. yeah. We're away. The, I have a little gray box in the top right hand corner of my screen, David. Can you see that or not? No, Fritz, no. I, I, we can't, no. It's okay, it's only for me. Very well, sir. We're going to have a quick overview of good practice in the LCA for Regents project. And to start, let's have a quick recall of what is a good practice. And this is the definition or the description of good practice as given to us by Interreg. It's an initiative carried out under one of the program's topics. Ours is in the bottom right hand corner. You'll see the yellow arrow there under environment and resource efficiency. Now, good practice is something that gives tangible results. It's proven, successful, tangible results. But in particular, it has a potential for learning and inspiration. And we need to filter all of our individual good practices through that filter to say, what can others learn from it? And how can others derive inspiration from it? So I'll make some comments on that. This is perhaps where we have some work to do still because many of the descriptions are good but they're not necessarily adequate for others to learn from. So let's have a quick look at some of the good practice criteria that we need to apply. Uh, clear objectives and public purposes. The uh, public purpose, of course, is sustainability. Using standardized life cycle methodology. Most of you have been doing that, so that's, that's working well. Metrics, visible, measurable outcomes. I think we still all have some little way to go before we understand what the measurable outcomes of our good practices have been. In particular, we also need to consider what we call spillover impacts in the life chain. Sometimes it's called burden, burden sharing. If we make an improvement in some part of the life chain, it actually has an unfortunate effect on other parts of the life chain. We need to be very conscious of that uh, when we adopt a life cycle approach. The second group of criteria that we need to think about is that your good practice can be replicated in other regions. How can we achieve this? The learning points and challenges have to be made very clear so that others can follow up and they have to be inspiring to stakeholders. It's about motivation, not only about methodology. 
Just a brief recall of the good practices that have been submitted so far. It's on average three good practices per region that have been submitted to the Google Drive. Here they all are, uh, and you know where they are because you've put your good practices put towards this. So let's quickly look at some of the useful outcomes that we've had so far from what you've all submitted. There's been an increased consciousness of life cycle issues. The most used instrument is LCA, although the most used management tool is EPD, Environmental Product Declarations. So this is already foreshadowing that our instruments are both on the assessment side and on the management side. There's an increasing use of standardised methodologies under ISO 14000 series or elsewhere. There's been some use of LCA and LCM by the public sector, not only by industry, although many of your examples relate to industry use of LCA, and some measurable resource efficiency results have been achieved. So overall, uh, it's encouraging uh, the road that we've come so far. There's also potential to go further, and this is a very dense slide, so I can just fly through it. Uh, review the focus on LCA. We need to strengthen the notion that Good practice is on LCA, LCA methodologies, met, uh, assessment, management, uh, action tools. And so a number of the good practices are a little bit off target because they're describing things that are not necessarily LCA. The good practice conclusions could be more analytical. There's a lot of good descriptive material. We're learning a lot, but the analytical part is sometimes a little bit left behind. We need to put more emphasis on results, on challenges and the learning potential. Also, I think you know all this, but it's not always coming through in your good practice. Stronger links to public policy on resource efficiency. So we need to be sure that good practices LCA is leading to good practice resource efficiency. I think it's useful to discuss how the LCA was used, not just to mention that it was used because how it was used as part of the learning experience. Perhaps mention some of the stakeholders that were involved in the good practice. For the LCAs that were done by or for industry to refer how these relate to public policy and to public institutions. You have, for example, a, a good LCA done on an insulation project. What should the government do with this? Uh, it's not necessarily a deficiency, but uh, you have a strong emphasis on building and uh, on construction, and there's a very strong emphasis on the energy and greenhouse gas SDGs. There's room to expand this and broaden it to include other SDGs, biodiversity, water management, resource management, land management, and so forth. And the scope to, uh, scope to broaden the life chain beyond the immediate point that we're considering. Okay, we've sent out three examples of good practice and we'll have these being presented by the, uh, the faculty this morning uh, using hazardous chemicals, carbon footprinting and land use. I'd like to quickly make some observations on good practice and RAB. The good practice can build on regional strengths and opportunities. We keep saying this, but we need to do it. We need to think of the entire toolbox, not only on LCA and APD. Think more widely. One thing that has come up several times is the cost of LCA. I think we need to see LCA as an investment rather than a cost. LCA leads to an improvement. The improvement is an investment. The improvement leads to either cost savings, new products, innovation. So please look at LCA and promote to your stakeholders LCA as an investment in the future. It's not a cost on the past. Data difficulties, it's true. Data is always a, a problem. Regions need to think about building up their databases, especially for materials flow analysis. Okay, 
uh, one last point. Think of good practices also in focusing on the post-COVID economy, using good practice to support new industries, innovation, rather than supporting old industries. I just want to give two quick examples, which we will hear of more from the Navara people very shortly, but it, uh, it's something that I thought we should focus on. Good practice lifecycle tool was used. It was carbon footprinting. Good. A number of others have done this as well. But what I particularly liked about this example was that it led to concrete policy action. We had a good practice of the lifecycle tool. What happened afterwards? Emission reduction measures were taken and emission compensation measures. So the, the tool, the lifecycle tool, led to concrete good practice policy action. This is the road that we need to take and the link we need to make. The other thing I liked was that the uh, Navarra region displayed quite clearly the life cycle assessment tools that it used and the life cycle management tools that it used. This is also something which should encourage us to imitate, to say what were the assessment tools and then what happened. So if we look at the status of the good practice uh, examples that we've received so far, taken together, the content and structure has shown a lot of progress. Congratulations. But a little more work is needed. Perhaps a slightly stronger focus on LCA. And we need to optimize the good practices for strong exchange of learning experience. Look at your GPAs and say, how can others learn from it? What are the learning points? What would I recommend to other regions? What can other regions learn? So this is perhaps the road ahead as we continue to refine our good practices. Thank you very much, and I'm happy to take some questions. Sharing. Okay, David, back to you. Hello. Yes, thank you very much, Fritz. I was just uh, asking a, a brief question. We were going to take questions now, but uh, we're going to take uh, questions later. Okay, so sure, I would encourage sure. any any attendees to uh, address questions. If you address the question um, via the chat window to all panelists, and then we'll um, forward it to uh, to Fritz um, after uh, the first four good practices uh, that we're going to see presented. Okay. Um, so before that let's move on to the first of our speakers today um the first good practice talk okay um our speaker is dr jolanta davarionieni of the countess university of technology in lithuania um and she works within the institute of environmental engineering um and she has extensive experience in the field of research on sustainable development and interregional projects implemented in cooperation close cooperation with local national regional public authorities which is uh something that that uh, fritz put emphasis on um she's professor and senior researcher at ktu the the, the kaunas university of technology where she lectures and supervises students on life cycle assessment as well as providing consultancy services to industry advising companies and authorities as a, a certified LCA expert. So, Yolanda, are you are you there? Yes, thank okay. you David. We can thank see you. your nice presentation. Can you see my screen sheet? Yes, we can. We can see your slides perfectly. Okay, so the floor is, is yours. Away okay. you go. Thank you very much. Well, hello, everybody. And uh, I would like to Today, I know that we have only seven minutes for each presentation of the practice, but today I would like to concentrate and I would like to present the substitution of hazardous substances in process industry using results of life cycle assessment and content will be related with use of hazardous substances, substitution of target substances, good practice and of course benefits from LCA. So, and I would like to start with this uh, showing this graph or figure. And uh, from Eurostat uh, databases, we see that starting from 2004, still use of hazardous substances and production of hazardous chemicals, hazardous to environment and to health was stable. I would say that stable, and still we have a lot of 
substances produced hazardous to human health and hazardous to environment. So, I don't know what, what is happening, but I, I can't go to the next slide. Okay, Yolanda, um, this seems to me like it, it may be a bandwidth issue, um, okay. that your audio is cutting out a little bit. Um, if you keep trying to move forward. Yes, I, I would like to go forward, but still there is, doesn't work. <laughs> Nothing, nothing's happening. Yes, I don't know why. Because I'm sharing, I, I know that I'm sharing. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to go further, but it doesn't work. Okay. Um, what we're going to do, if you if you stop sharing now, Jolanda, and yes, I uh, do. okay, Sandra is going to uh, project for okay. you. Okay, <laughs> so she'll find your place, and then you can <laughs> carry on. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. Okay. Can you see that now? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Sandra. Apologies for that, Yolanda. You can uh, continue now. Okay. Okay. Please next slide. So, why am I talking about the hazardous substances? Because, and this is uh, this good practice I want to present to audience. It's uh, like example, and we know that hazardous substances still are used in many, many industries in many production of goods and um, products so substitution as a prevention of pollution and prevention of hazards is one of the good strategy and uh, it means that replacement of or reduction of hazardous substances it could be in pro products and processes substitution can happen voluntary or some, sometimes uh, this is common practice to, for companies when they want to get eco labels or implement environmental management systems according to ISO standards. Of course, substitution can be demanded by customers with more stringent requirements in the field of hazardous substances and also mandatory. And you know, maybe that uh, thank you for EU reach regulation on restriction uh, evaluation authorization and uh, of reach regulation came into force in 2007 and we started to think about what what we are using in the companies what are the hazards uh, main hazards used in production of goods and products and this is was also uh, mandatory required by you by reach regulation to make or to substitute most uh, hazardous substances or substances of very high concern so it is required when the manufacturer or we use or dispose uh, disposal poses unacceptable risk of human to human health and environment please next slide Sandra, can you hear me? Okay, thank you very much. So, and in the, uh, for the case, for the good practice, uh, we have metalworking company. They have uh, processes as uh, cleaning, priming, and cutting of metal sheets and profiles intended mostly for ship building and repair. And of course, um, these kinds of companies, they use a lot of hazardous substances, such as volatile organic compounds in many technological processes, and of course, in metal priming pro processes. And in this company, where case was uh, applied, the problematic substances are different VOCs, which are emitted in amounts of nearly 46,000 per year. And of course, according to the directives, uh, the company was asked and encouraged uh, by the local or regional authority to search for alternatives and to decrease the VOC emissions. And this case study was prepared under the live program project Fit for Each. And this is an ongoing project uh, on Bal Baltic 
pilot cases on reduction of emissions by substitution of hazardous chemicals and resource efficiency. And we are working in uh, all Baltic countries, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. And this case, case is from Lithuania. And you see that the um, company case was with the uh, uh, reprotoxic substances uh, with uh, metoxypropanol, which was uh, the company asked to, to search for alternative and to uh, substitute this uh, VOC with, with the other substances. Next, please. So, for, for the company case, there was also search for alternative without metoxypropanol. And the alternative also contains some VOCs, but was the amount was even less than in previous um, preparations. Next, please. Uh, for, as I have mentioned, the public authorities have been negotiating with the company to achieve conformity with EU requirements. And the goal of the case study was to assess the difference in life cycle environmental impacts by comparing two thinners that are used in the two component shop primer as a part of coating system. And um, yes, next please. For that purpose was uh, selected uh, was used the ISO standard and was selected the recipe method and EcoInvent database for, for life cycle assessment. Next, please. Of course, each project has to start with the identification of uh, or situation analysis in the company and identification of hazardous substances was done by using material flow analysis and input output diagrams and uh, um, to understand which substances of very high concern exist and of course as i have mentioned these two uh, vocs were selected for substitution next please for identification of alternatives were used uh, different ways and checked uh, different databases such as subspore database, ECA substitution cases. And of course, we used company contacts and various other materials for selection of um, feasible alternative. Next, please. And you see the results for baseline scenario and for alternative scenario of this case study. And uh, on the left side in the figure, you see the, the red, the baseline scenario and alternative scenario for two main uh, indicators. Uh, and the alternative situation was uh, even better for comparing with the uh, many hazards type. And of course, uh, regarding the VOC, uh, VOC emissions for the company. Next, please. So the results of the study show the importance of conducting of life cycle assessment study and uh, also the shortcomings of local informal non-standard precise assessments were understood. Uh, the LCA of two shop primer products showed in this specific case that the water-based shop primer was environmentally preferably for almost all environmental impact categories. All the impact categories showed more than 34% decrease in environmental impact. And the biggest decrease, more than 50% was observed in different um, impact categories, such as ozone depletion, freshwater eutrophication, human toxicity, particle matter formation, ionizing radiation, and metal depletion. And overall, the results indicated the importance of conducting life cycle assessment for decision making as many impacts are not individually obvious. Next, please. And in conclusion, I would say that life cycle assessment was used to justify product substitution in company due to regulatory concern. And of course, the main one of the main things was supportive uh, uh, supportive communication from environmental protection agency 
And of course, the results indicated that the substitution to the less hazardous substances was beneficial for the company, not only from environmental point of view, but also from simplified work safety requirements, compliance with requirements of the law on resource efficiency. And the results indicated that the substitution to the water-based primary paint was beneficial in all environmental categories. Next, please. So in conclusion, I would, I would say that life cycle assessment, the main benefits and why the hazardous substances should be substituted. And there are different and very important uh, points that uh, using the life cycle assessment, uh, usually you can get a smaller hazard waste management costs, simpler chemical inventory, simplified work safety requirements, on the market, product can be positioned as consumer health and environmental friendly, compliance with requirements of the law, which are or will come into force in the near future. Substitution may enable new innovations and resource efficiency changes in product costs. LCA could be useful for any process, processing industry where hazardous or substances of very, very high concern are used. And last slide, please. <laughs> How you should start? I would say that first of all, you have to find out that you have substitution candidates and you have to prioritize your criteria. Uh, and these criteria could be the legal pressure, problems for workers' protection, high costs of environmental emissions, of course, requests from clients and company policy. So thank you very much. And this was the last slide for me. And I think, thank you, Sandra. Thank you very much, uh, Yolanda. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Uh, very interesting presentation of, of how life cycle assessment can generate positive change, um, not just f uh, positive for the environment, but also for the worker's safety and uh, for the company in society. Excellent. Let's move now to the second good practice. Um, we're going to hear about resource efficient land use to promote sustainable land design and development. Um, we're hearing now from Finland. Uh, Shaila, are you there? Would you like to begin by opening your microphone, your camera? Yes, I'm here. Hi. OK, right. Uh, Shaila Pak uh, Pakakangas um, works as a geotechnical designer on infrastructure construction projects at Rambol. Finland, um, which is a worldwide engineering and consultancy company. Shaila has experience in CO2 calculations of earthworks and infrastructure projects, and she's actively working on a number of different circular economy projects. Okay. And if you'd like to share your presentation now. Yes. Unless you plan to speak to us briefly before you share. We can start with sharing and. Uh... Okay. Okay. Right, I can see your PowerPoint and now you're full screen. Perfect. Okay, so Shaila, when you're Great. ready. Thank you. So, uh, nice to meet you all. Um, I will just try to find my camera. Switch it off. Okay, never mind. Nice to meet you all. I'm here to talk to you about uh, recycled soil material project that was performed in Ankapuisto in Vanta in Finland. Vanta is one of the major cities in the capital area of Helsinki. Yes. So, climate change impact assessments are often focused on emissions generated during the operation phase. When the construction phase emissions are often considered not so important. But in this project, uh, resource waste and principles were used as a, as a roadmap, and a pilot project with recycled soil materials was performed in Ankapusta Park in Vanta. 
in the first phase of this uh, construction project, the bond, uh, the park was um, updated, uh, starting with uh, dredging the bonds, replacing bridges, and landscaping the park in general. Uh, quite often, soil and rock material management is identified by the potential do, tool to decrease emissions gener generated in the development urban environment. So, in comparison, that we if we see only the construction phase, it is uh, only the using phase. It's also important to take a look in the construction phase. So, in the first phase of the uh, of the park update so uh, the pond was dredged and the sediments 1500 cubic meters generated were initially planned to be transported to a landfill but instead the city and the designers and all the project team decided that it would be smarter to use these these sediments somewhere in the in the park construction because it was it was quite good material to be used and it would be uh, uh, quite a shame just to just to dump the good material in a landfill. So thus, in the second phases of the park construction, a recycled soil material per project was established. So these uh, dredged sediments were packed into geotubes to dry because the sediment was uh, had a quite a high water content which had to be removed before the sediments itself could be used in uh, in earthworks. Here you can see the, the geotubes initially on the left picture, where all the water was drained and run back. And actually in the previous picture, you can see on the left side again, the geotubes itself. So the soil, soil mass, the really wet soil was packed and dried for uh, about a year in these geotubes. And after that, when the sediments were uh, concentrated and all the excess water was removed, these sediments would be reused, building up the park. But because the sediments itself, they are quite clayey, they alone do not work as a, as a substrate. Uh, on the top of the, the dredge sediments, also, other materials like excess and surplus materials from the city were used, such as stone chips used as a winter, abrasive, rock dust, and forest substrate. So, a variety of these materials provided the possibility to develop the mixtures, which were completely recycled materials based and corresponded to the commercial soil products. So, there was initially already a plan for this park. And to be built with commercial materials. And with the, in this pilot, the purpose was to create recycled materials substrate that would be would have the same function as a commercial material. So the separate mixtures were established for topsoil and field soil applications. And in total, uh, approximately 5,200 cubic meters meaning almost 10,000 tons of materials were utilized in this part. And here you can see the exterior doing the sieving because the, the soil mixtures or the different soil types had to be mixed and sieved to have a homo homogeneous uh, material so that it would be used as a substrate. And the main focus was the functionality of the park provided by the original design had to be maintained. So we were following all the technical requirements and all the technical aspects so that it would fulfill all the requirements. So then uh, the city and the whole project team wanted to have a look at what does this recycled materials pilot uh, gave us an outcome. So the financial and uh, climate impacts were analyzed with cost and emission calculations. And this project was compared with an alternative conventional scenario. So we were comparing this pilot project uh, to the situation that if the if the park part would have been built as as usual, 
using the commercial products. So the emission calculations are based on the internationally recognized standards, such as ISO 1040 and 40. And I just have picked here the main, the main standards we followed in this project. And emissions derived during, um, and only the emissions derived during the construction phase were, were calculated in this. So a full LCA was not generated yet in this phase. And this is because we, don't, we do not know yet how will the recycled materials behave? So later on, there, later on, there is a possibility to do the full LCA. The cost calculations were based on the national cost database. So the results were quite quite good. We were able to save 23,000 kilos of uh, carbon uh, equivalents, and the cost savings were almost 60,000 euros. And most of these savings were achieved due to the avoided landfill fees. And also, um, most of the or majority of the saved CO2 emissions were because we could avoid transportation, because the landfill site uh, was located further away, and thus we could save a lot of kilometers of transportation. Uh, it should be also noted that the utilization of some recycled substrate was associated with significant emissions during the sieving process, which impacted the achieved emission reduction. This was because some of the topsoil of the park was used as a recycled materials, and it, it included a lot of fruits and grass and all, all these other um, like materials and clumps that are difficult to sieve, which increased the need or the intensivity of the seeding process. Also, the project has produced valuable data on practical issues related to the construction with recycled materials. So as all the pilot projects, this project also produced important information for the old operators working with earthworks. So here, a little summary that what did we learn from, the, from this project? The quality of the materials was quite much better than expected. Of course, the final results will be observed during operation time of the park, such as if, if the recycled materials uh, will produce more weeds than commercial materials. At the moment, it does not look like that, but that will be seen in the upcoming years. It should be also noted that the formula for the required compositions of the recycled materials requires information of the available materials in time. Because we use different materials from the city operations, it is important to know that when and where these materials are generated, so they can be picked up in time. And also, it's important to have the storage space where we could keep these materials and mix them. So the earlier we know about the approach, the, the process, the better it is for the, for the design phase. And also, emission intensive work phases should be minimized. And thus, as I mentioned, the selection of suitable materials is a key factor in this uh, design phase. Thank you. This was my presentation for today. Thank you very much, Shella. Yeah, most most interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, and uh, a notable mention there of, of how to use the um, LCA to achieve benefits and save money. Okay. Um, let's move now to the third good practice, Elsa. I hope, yes, you have the uh, little presenter bubble. Okay, Elsa Nunes is the CEO at Iradiare, a Portuguese company working mainly with public authorities, uh, supporting their activities in areas that are overall related to sustainability. And in this context, Elsa has been working for several years with uh, Simbal or Kimbal, Simbal, I, I, I imagine, uh, an intermunicipal association which gathers 13 uh, municipalities of Baixo Alentejo uh, subregion, part of the Alentejo region. And she's going to be speaking today about awards, more Alkeva, more value. Elsa, are you ready to share? Yeah, good morning. Thank you, David, for your introduction. I'm going now to try to share my uh, presentation in order to uh, also present you the Mais Alkeva Mais Valor Awards. So, 
Oh. On we go. I hope that you can see me now. Perfect. Yep. My oh, okay. screen. Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, just a small introduction because um, the um, as you as I'm saying, um, the this is uh, an award, and the name is Mais Alqueva Mais Valor which means in English, uh, more Alkiva, more value. So I must explain what is Alkiva for the ones that don't know it already. Alkiva is the largest artificial lake in Europe. The dam that uh, originated this uh, lake is located on Guadiana River, which is one of the longest in the Iberia Peninsula in Alentejo. Uh, so, um, the objectives of the construction of this dam were related to the production of electric energy, but above all, uh, they were related with the creation of an irrigation system for Alentejo, which is, uh, well, it was a very dry region. And so, uh, the construction of this dam and the irrigation system somehow enabled the development of ag agriculture and tackled the problem of land abandonment, uh, among others. Sorry. So, this is such uh, just a, an overview of some landscapes that are related to the, this uh, big artificial lake. The, these awards, Mais Alkiv, Mais Valor, they were, uh, they were um, first uh, um, implemented last year, 2019, and they aimed at recognizing projects that implement a set of good practices that are related to the efficient use of resources with special focus on water. The Mais Alkiv, Mais Valor Awards initiative was integrated in a wider project that was related to local water agendas in Alentejo. And this project itself aimed at creating a multi-level network with two main focuses. Uh, and these main focuses were devoted to their most important target audiences that are the educational community and the farmers. Going back to the awards, they aim at recognize projects that implement a set of good practices related, as I was telling before, with the use, the efficient use of water, but also with the efficient use of soil, biodiversity conservation, promotion and dissemination of sustainable business models, uh, integrating, of course, the latest con concepts and uh, goals of sustainable development. In 2019, as I was telling, the first edition of these More Alkeva, More Value Awards, um, this first edition aimed to identify and give visibilities to companies, to people, to institutions that contribute to the efficient use of natural resources, and I, as I was saying, with a special focus on water. The aim was also to create a collaborative network of farmers just a, a year, uh, perhaps a comment that sometimes they are not so good at networking. And this uh, collaborative network could demonstrate good practices and promote dissemination of these concepts that mainly reconcile environment and agriculture, creating added value for the producers who implement them, not only in the short or medium, uh, but also in the long term. Um, now, I, I will talk a little about what have been the categories that were uh, awarded and uh, what, in what this can relate to our LCA for Regions project. Well, the categories were more use, aiming at distinguishing projects that promote sustainable practices related to social and environmental criteria, highlighting the sustainable use of water. Then we had another category that was more transformation <clears throat> that was aimed at distinguishing agro-industrial entities that have been implementing practices that led to an increasing efficient use of water in their process and or implemented sustainable practices in social 
environmental or even economic terms. The category more innovation in highlighted innovation research projects that promote sustainability and efficiency in the use of water by water users. And more production aimed at distinguishing agriculture producers, beneficiaries of the irrigation system who promoted the efficiency, the efficient, sorry, use of water as well as the adoption of sustainable practices. Once again, economic, social, or environmental. Well, what we um, what we think is uh, most relevant at this stage is to try to um, in in this uh, um, system, in this awarding system, to integrate the LCA uh, as a criteria, as if sorry, okay as if we could uh, integrate in this uh, kind of awards that are related to the efficient use of resources and mainly of the water resource, um, the use of uh, life cycle assessment seems to be a, a very natural choice. So by participating in this project, uh, the partner Simbal intends to present and to showcase to the entities in charge of this award the possibilities and the advantages of using life cycle assessment as a criteria for these awards and therefore uh, to promote and disseminate this tool among the regional stakeholders. Um, just to, as a, a very short conclusion, um, I might say that um, all of us are fully aware of the important, important importance of the use, uh, the efficient use of water, because uh, water is really a resource that we should preserve and we should uh, very well take care. Um, this being said, I remain uh, available in the appropriate uh, space to any questions that you wish to make, and I thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elsa. Um, you're going to stop sharing now yeah just a that's it. Perf perfect okay. that's it thank okay you. thank thank you very much yes um and also at the end there you invited questions and i'd like to remind uh, all participants or viewers and and also um the panelists yourselves um that the chat box is open for questions okay it'd be very interesting to deal with them in a moment now we're going to move to the fourth uh good practice for today this is um our speaker here is Alessandro da Como, uh, who represents the Lombardy region. Uh, Alessandro, I think. Could... Hey, David, can you hear me? Yes, I can, yes. Um, yes, I cannot see me because there is a problem uh, to my webcam. I, I'm not sure there is a device problem. Uh, so I, I try to, to share the presentation and okay. see if it's not uh, related with the webcam. Uh, the, mm, the problem, the, the sharing of the presentation. Okay, uh, let's, let's yes, let's do that now. And and if there's a problem, well, as I introduce you, uh, okay, that looks like it's going to work. Okay, hang on. Okay, can, can you see it? Yes. Yeah, I just saw myself briefly there. My goodness, what a shock. Okay, yes, I can see your your screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I don't see me as well. <laughs> Okay, doesn't matter. Um, we can we can see what we need to see. Okay, let me just briefly introduce you. Alessandro represents the Lombardy Region Directive uh, Directorate, excuse me, for Environment and Climate Change, where he heads the unit for Circular Economy and Soil Remediation. Um, the Directorate deal with policy on sustainable development, circular economy, soil remediation, energy and climate change, uh, environmental impact assessment, biodiversity, air pollution, and IPPC. Alexandra himself is an environmental scientist. Um, before his current role, he also worked in the European Commission. And indeed, since January 2017, he's been leading the Interreg Europe project um, CERSI, um, which is the European regions towards a circular economy. And that's currently in call to um, phase two. OK, so Alexandro, when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. OK, okay. Yes. the For floor is yours. And my region. And I'm going to present to you the lead protocol, which is the one of the good practices we selected, uh, and because we think it would be of your interest, uh, find some uh, um, some hints on this protocol. Uh, 
Moreover, we think that the Leeds pathway uh, could be could propose a set of hints. <laughs> Sorry, there is a problem in the video, pardon. Uh, a set of hints to steer policies in the direction of both energy efficiency and resource efficiency, and where the LCA, or generally speaking, LCA methodology, not just assessment, can play an important role from our point of view. Um, what is the lead? The lead, the, the acronym means leadership in energy and environment and environmental design, and it's a voluntary scheme or protocol to get a certification. And it's a scheme always more used worldwide. The father of this, uh, or the mother, if you prefer, of this scheme is the Green Building Council based in the US. And so we, the, the, the protocol was born in the, in the USA. And the object of the, of the protocol since the beginning was uh, the development of sustainable high performance building in areas. But what is most important, supporting all the process. So not just the sustainability of one step of the construction, but uh, the only step from the design to the management and perhaps also the decommissioning of the buildings or of the areas. And just a few words concerning the certification procedure that once uh, uh, the one, 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 people, uh, one person has to follow if they uh, uh, want to start this procedure. Um, the, start, the starting point is the action of the project promoter who propose to, proposes to the um, uh, to the uh, authorities uh, the idea of the project and agree on the uh, uh, on the lead project registration agreement and on the lead project certification agreement. That's, and then this starts a dialogue among the um, the consultants for the for the lead protocol and also uh, with the uh, green business certification. Uh, which is the, the subject uh, who has to re release, to issue the certification in the end, that uh, ends with the, the certification that can be of different kind, depending on the scores um, got by the project during the process. Uh, now, what is important from, uh, from our point of view concerning the lead approach is uh, the holistic approach of the lead, the flexibility and the, um, uh, the uh, articulation the uh, diversity of the of the methodology uh, first of all uh, the lead protocol can be applied to different kind of entities and scales here you see some example you have specific schemes for new construction for instance for existing building for commercial interiors for schools but also for neighborhoods development which can be of great interest for local administration because this means manage, manage in entire areas in your territory. Then the other important aspect that we would like to emphasize is the environmental aspects and the uh, categories of impact or environmental aspect taken into consideration. Here you see all the categories that the uh, lead protocol uh, deal with, and you have to consider that all these into all these categories there are several uh, uh, parameters to be evaluated during the process and in order to have a complete evaluation of the project. And here, just to go uh, straight to the resource efficiency issues, uh, in all some of these categories, you find uh, topics that are related to, um, to resource efficiency. For instance, in the sustainable sites category, you find soil, remedi soil remediation and requalification of the site, and also alternative fu fuels issue. In the water efficiency category, you find reduction of use of water, efficient management irrigation of, uh, of, of efficient management of, of irrigation water. So this is resource efficiency as well. But main perhaps uh, category uh, which could be of our interest here is the material and resources category, where you find uh, several parameters which deal with, uh, of course, uh, resource efficiency, such as the reuse of building construction with management, reuse of, mater of materials, and so on. Then there is an interesting, uh, an interesting category, which is regional priority, which uh, uh, is important because uh, can, uh, with, through this category, we can focus on critical environmental local issue that can be different from one region to, the, from one region to another region. And this is quite important. And uh, to uh, another point, uh, concerning the local application of the lead protocol, uh, 
considering that not all the parameters are compulsory, but some of the parameters are optional, uh, this means that uh, depending on the, ch the choices done by the promoter or by the public institution who is leading and who, and who is steering the evaluation, uh, the choice can be steered towards specific priorities for, for priorities for the local territory. Now let's go to the LCA into the lead. Uh, at the beginning, the lead protocol was considered by the scientists, I could say, as a weak, uh, a bit weak, um, with respect to the scientific base for assessment. But then, little by little, in particular since 2014, with the introduction of the LCA, uh, in particular into the materials and resource efficiency category, the quantitative approach of the lead and the, pay, the scientific pay for, for assessment, base for assessment increased a lot. Uh, the quoted category, material and resources, used the LCA approach, uh, in particular the LCA, the LCA of the wall, of the wall building, um, in the building life cycle impact reduction parameter, which is not compulsory, but if a, a promoter decides to decides to use this parameter, uh, this give, gives him a lot of scores more. Uh, so the use of LCA is, uh, is really important and also can give to the project a, high, a, a higher score in the end. Uh, now some critical point of view concerning the use of uh, LCA in building uh, uh, evaluation and so also in the lead protocol. This is a, a, a these are consideration coming from the position paper of the Green Building Council in Italy, uh, quite recent, 2009, May 2019, and uh, they uh, in this position, they in this position paper, emphasized some of the problems that they call key messages uh, concerning the application of LCA in the, uh, uh, to the building sector, also in Leeds, therefore. Uh, the first problem is the database. Uh, we have a lot of databases concerning LCA in Italy, but we need a homogeneous database in order to run in, on all the territory, in all the regions and the areas, uh, homogeneous analysis and evaluation. This is the first problem. The second problem and is the need of a friendly software for the designers in order to run the LCA analysis in an easier manner. And then also the need of a clear framework of shared rules for the application of the LCA assessment. I quoted this position because the Green Building Council, Council Italia is one of the leader in uh, the application of LCA in building analysis. And so I think this position can be uh, very important and relevant to be taken into consideration. In Italy, we have an initiative, we have an initiative from the uh, National Agency for New Technologies and Sustainable Development, INEA, which is also our stakeholders in the project, to create a national database for uh, LCA. Uh, but it is, of course, an ongoing project and uh, it is not available yet, but however, we are going in, we are uh, aware of the problem and we are going in the direction of creating a, a homogeneous and unified database for LCA. Yeah. Then I would like to uh, propose to you some local use in our region of the LCA, uh, of the lead, pardon, in particular in the municipality, the Milan municipality. Uh, we uh, have 80 building certified lead in Milan and uh, 130 ongoing procedure to get the certification. Therefore, Milan was recognized by the Green Business Certification INC as the first, uh, uh, as one of the first lead city in Europe. So this is an important rec uh, recognition, uh, and uh, that's why also in the new master plan of the city, 2019, in particular into the environmental report of the strategic environmental assessment, we uh, have. Uh, the, the municipality has identified uh, two uh, of the schemes uh, of the lead protocol, the, in particular the own scheme uh, and the neighborhood scheme, as good practices to be taken into consideration uh, for the uh, for uh, how to say produce uh, um, construction and intervention on the uh, territory of the Milan municipality, coherent with the principles of the master plan. So this is, this is quite interesting and can be a suggestion in order how to use 
the, uh, the reference to the lead protocol in the, in the uh, planning for a region or for a, a local authority. So in the end, uh, uh, what are the lessons learned by, this, by the selection of this good practice uh, um, from our team? First of all, the way LCA is used in lead and the analysis reported, in particular the analysis reported by the from the um, uh, Green Building Council Italia on its use can provide significant hints uh, for the use of LCA and also can provide some elements to support policies and choices. For example, to integrate the analysis and the policies, both to integrate into the analysis and into the policies, both energy and resource efficiency. And in the end, also, I would like to, we think it's quite interesting. Um, the, the idea that an institution can steer on its territory the application of the lead, using it as a tool, as the Milano municipality did in the master plan, and also orienting its use, orienting its use towards the local priorities. Uh, and I think that's, that's it for the moment. Uh, in case of question, I'm available. And so thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much indeed, um, the Alessandro. Yeah, um, it's just a pity we we couldn't see you, but uh, we could hear you um, perfectly. Okay, and you're stopping sharing. Okay, fantastic. Right, so that's four uh, four done, and we have three more after the short uh, question and answer session. Um, I'd just like to say um, just quickly, we are a little bit um, behind time. Um, uh, a little bit behind the schedule we originally had planned. So for those of you who've, uh, who are uh, attending from uh, uh, from outside uh, the 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 panel, the group of panelists, then um, we estimate that we may finish as, as late as about 11, I think, or we may be finished sooner. But anyway, um, at the moment, what I'm seeing on my screen is, is PowerPoint. Um, but you, can you launch that for me in full screen? No? Okay. Well, a couple of questions, and they're both addressed to uh, to Shaila. Um, are you there? Shaila? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. And let me see if I can if I can see you. Your camera. Mm. <laughs> hi there. Okay. Hi. Hi. Right. You would probably have, have seen in the uh, in the chat window, but the two questions. And the first is. Um, have the national or regional authorities collaborated in uh, in the project you were describing earlier? Uh, not not directly, of course, indirect, uh, indirectly, because they they take care of all the environmental issues and permits, so that the substrate had to be accordingly all the legislations. So, in that sense, indi indirectly, yes. Indirectly, yes, perfect. Okay, and the second question, um, also to Shaila, which methodology was used to carry out the life cycle cost analysis? So um, we did not uh, perform exact life cycle cost analysis because we were concentrating mainly on the construction phase. So basically, we were comparing the costs of the construction. Um, as it, as it's done in in any construction project, so we were comparing the conventional way to the pilot project we performed. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and if there are no other questions, I think we can now move on. Thanks very much, Shaila. If you'd like to, uh, you. free to to take away your video if you wish. Okay, um, and Alvin. I think Sandra is hello. Hi, hi. Hello. This, this is the the fifth good practice. Um, uh, Sandra is going to share the screen for you, I believe. Yes, that's true. Right. Okay. She's just looking for that. Then I'll just briefly introduce you uh, here. Uh, Dr. Alvin Pinta is a research professor, head of the Laboratory for Environmental Sciences and Engineering at the National Institute of Chemistry, um, Ljubljana, Slovenia. Okay. Um, he qualified in, in Ljubljana in 92, and then he was at uh, the University of Technology in Tokyo, in Japan, and then later at the Research Institute of Catalysis uh, and Environment in France, in Villeurbanne. Um, his research interests are in the fields of heterogeneous 
catalysis, um, environmental catalysis, kinetics, mechani mechanisms of catalytic reactions in multi-phase reactors, wastewater treatment, the production of hydrogen rich, rich mixtures from renewables and process intensification. And he's a prolific author of over 160 scientific papers and review articles, uh, and also the owner of several international patents. Okay, he's going to be talking today about uh, energy and resource efficiency in the hotel industry in Slovenia. Okay, Alvin, the floor uh, is yours. Yeah. Thank you very much, David, for your kind introduction. Hello, everybody. As the title of this slide says, I will talk about the energy and resource efficiency in hotel uh, industry. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, as David said, uh, I'm coming from the National Institute of Chemistry, which is located in Ljubljana, the capital of Slovenia. And Ljubljana belongs to the cohesion region of Western uh, Slovenia. The region itself as the country also is characterized by great diversity in a small uh, area. Uh, it's also known for huge landscape diversity and biodiversity. And uh, the region itself is also known as, as be, to be one of the greenest European uh, regions. So a lot of activities are done in the region regarding the sustainable tourism. As you can see here on the slide, the tourism itself represents about 12% uh, of GDP in the region. That's why I have selected uh, a good practice coming from the field of sustainable tourism, and which will be also now presented to you. The next slide, please. Uh, uh, in the cohesion region, Western Slovenia, uh, we do a lot of efforts in order to see the region as a region of high quality of life and residence for all residents and visitors, then an, as an innovative and creative region with a competitive economy, as well as an associated region with uh, effective governance. Next slide, please. So, uh, when uh, actually an idea uh, uh, exerted in order to build a resort in, uh, in a Bohin Glacial uh, Valley and rural region, which is located on the brink of Triglau National Park, which is actually the only uh, national park in Slovenia, it was, of course, very crucial to take environment into consideration. And uh, the best idea was then uh, to construct an ecological and energy efficient uh, hotel in this area in order to support uh, <clears throat> the activities in the field of sustainable uh, tourism uh, development not only in the region, but also in the country itself. So, and as you can see on the slide, this is the, uh, this is the building, actually a hotel, which was uh, constructed in 2009, and which, which has been still now uh, the only Green Globe certified hotel uh, uh, in the country. Next slide, please. So, regarding, uh, regarding detailed information on the practice, I can tell you that uh, <clears throat> this, this hotel, this building was constructed by uh, a private uh, enterprise and act, uh, as, as a first ecological hotel constructed in the country. And uh, for that purpose, also the European Union funds uh, have been obtained. There were some issues and challenges when constructing a building because at that time there was no competition or no comparison in southeastern Europe regarding the construction of such a building. There were also uh, challenges regarding the marketing and uh, challenges regarding the innovative uh, approaches that had to be implemented, as well as the sustainable uh, management. Uh, the company that constructed the hotel specializes in energy efficient construction and the building was uh, constructed from scratch using at that time the top technologies uh, available including even some pilot uh, uh, system. Uh, 
regarding the management, the sustainable management was overall implemented, uh, including also the local food suppliers, uh, recycling, separation of waste, uh, promoting cultural and historical uh, heritage, but mostly a lot of efforts were done regarding the, uh, let's say, efficient use of resources uh, and, and energy. The LCA methodologies that were included uh, when constructing the building were a life cycle sustainability assessment and eco design, and of course, then life cycle thinking. Regarding the life cycle sustainable assessment, there were all actually aspects that are, these are social, environmental, and economical aspects that were taken into the uh, consideration. Next, please. You can just go ahead, please. Okay, so these are some of, uh, facts shown here regarding the evidence of success. Uh, as you can see uh, from the slide, a huge uh, decrease regarding the COC, uh, CO2 emissions uh, was achieved, and furthermore, also a huge decrease regarding the energy uh, consumption. Uh, <clears throat> The building, which it has been represented here as a good practice, uh, even has its own cogeneration station to produce uh, electricity, and a lot of efforts have been made regarding to efficiently close the, uh, the heat balance of the building itself. Overall, like this, it was possible to achieve that the, uh, that the presented uh, hotel resort produces, as mentioned here, 55% fewer emissions and also results in carbon footprint, which is 90% less compared to a traditional uh, hotel. Next slide, please. Uh, all these efforts, of course, have been generously awarded by a list of awards. Some of them are mentioned here on this slide. And the most important are, as mentioned here, are the Green Globe, uh, Green Globe certificate, then the Mythic Stars, and then the awards that come from uh, uh, Green Traveler Guides Batch, as well as uh, awards coming from the Trip Advisor. And the hotel was also selected and presented in the the so-called award you like with the climate you like European Commission's communication campaign, uh, which was introduced uh, and implemented in the year 2012. Next slide, please. So the lessons learned uh, are the following. So the greatest obstacle for innovators in Slovenia is the bureaucracy system, which somehow represents a stop sign for foreign investments investors and it takes also a lot of persistent knowledge to uh, to see the project done regarding the use of LCA methodologies a lack of and access to the appropriate and representative data was a major obstacle next slide please so uh, this is my final slide. I can say that the public authority uh, can certainly learn something from uh, this example of good practice. And this is how the principles of sustainability and life cycle methodologies uh, can be implemented in practice and uh, de definitely demonstrates that the legislation in the field of construction could be modified in a stepwise manner in uh, terms of requesting from investors to implement a higher extent of green green technologies and efficient use and recycling and then implementation in practice okay next slide okay that was all from my side and thank you very much thank you very much Alvin. yes yeah, um wonderful thank you okay um we're going to move straight now to the sixth good practice um hopefully mr jakob Votic is there okay jakob um could you activate your video for us right he's he's there but he's without audio so okay okay i can see you um 
Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yes. Mm. Okay. Well, okay. Right. Would you like? Would you like yeah would you like to begin to uh to share your presentation as i as i introduce you okay yes okay perfect so mr jacob wattage um is the vice ceo of isadom 2000 polska which is a family-owned uh sme which has developed a unique passive house building technology. Since 1990, the company has manufactured and delivered over 19,000 buildings in 43 countries. Uh, Isodom, or Isodom buildings not only utilize 10 to 20 times less energy um, as traditional homes, but they're twice as durable. Okay, um, For 20 years, they've been manufacturing styrofoam construction forms, insulation panels, and other foam components. Okay, The company mission is to develop energy efficient, durable, eco-friendly, and easy to use construction technologies. And Jacob today is going to be talking about LCA in reducing CO2 emissions in the production of building components. Okay, Jacob? Okay, brilliant. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a slight delay here as your presentation loads. Hello. Um, maybe an idea. Right, this is a, a bandwidth issue, I think. Um, an alternative would be for Sandra to, to load it for you here. Okay, let's try. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Jacob, I think we're, we're going to uh, launch your PDF from here, if that's okay. Yes, 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 let's try it, please. Okay, can you see that on your screen now? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Talking basically. Yes, we can, hear you, we can hear you talking. Audio connection. <clears throat> and also, yes, the audio connection is fine. Um, it's. I think it's just a bandwidth issue. With. Uh, can what? What can you see on your screen now? Has the because we can on the on the computers here we can see. No, still not. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's let's do the following. If you if you want to begin talking, um, and we can we can uh, follow the presentation, and Sandra can uh, can navigate through the slides as you as you, as you speak. Okay. Yeah. So it might be an idea for you to have it open for us for yourself, oh. but we'll. Okay. Um. Hi. Um. My name is. Uh, material manufacturer um, an environmentalist by trade but job is to produce bricks so that's where we come from uh, a media company for 30 years and we manufacture our bricks in central Remember, uh, UN signatory of caring for climate so what we want to do, we want to have a zero CO2 footprint. So we started um, to uh, analyze our uh, environmental. Um, can we go forward? So um, what we've learned is uh, when we tackle the as a manufacturer of a house building component, then appears an issue of 
what is the project. So um, on the construction mark, huge players, traditional brick manufacturers and traditional thermal insulation material suppliers who do run their own environmental analysis of their own products, like the bricks. In fact, there is a term of comp or the final product is house. So then the question arises, what should be analyzed? Who should do the LCA, LCC analysis of what we our own product only and should CA funding. Uh, the C analysis uh, of uh, from construction proved that 80% of costs, 80% of emissions come from the the lifespan of the complete project. It is a summary of over 400 building components as well as services. The, um, the location of a building, whether it faces south or north. And the more durable the building is, um, and the more durable the building materials are, um, it has a huge impact on the LCA. So there is a lot of elements to be considered and there is, unfortunately, there is a lot of space for uh, um, manipulation from the side of manufacturers. Um, manipulation or just there is a lot of questions like um, if I own three factories, I use three types of energy supply for manufacturing, actually the same brick manufactured in various places will have a significantly different um, CO2 label or energy embedded energy. So um, it is complicated. Um, the last slide, uh, I, I had a very brief um, presentation, so I'm very happy to answer your questions later on. What we've learned as a manufacturer of one component that um, the LCA show the um, the life and it, it brings our attention to the lifespan of a project. Uh, we've learned that LCA can be very difficult for uh, some industries, like house building industry is, because this complete product, the building consists of number of of, of elements. Then um, when we calculate it, there is the thing of in intended use or normal conditions. And each building can be constructed in various places and, and the conditions can be different. Um, there is a lot, lack of quality data. Alessandro mentioned that the lack of quality data available from manufacturers. Um, and some data are clearly frauded that we say it already. And uh, the big industries, the, the monopolists on European market, uh, they are very hesitant to the LCA. And I speak about the biggest players, the biggest bricks manufacturers, windows manufacturers, cement manufacturers. So actually they are blocking a uh, large scale implementation of the LCA, LCC. LCC. Um, what else? Um, we've learned that it's very difficult to do the proper LCA analysis for products like ours without proper um, industry academia cooperation. And what we've learned from the LCA of our own project, as well as the LCA of the final product made out of our brick, is a huge need for green manufacturing, local manufacturing. It has been uh, pointed out a number of times. And manufacturing of how, um, building materials based on uh, renewables, which is uh, a huge challenge. Imagine uh, a brick factory powered by renewable energy sources, like my factory, which is very, very small uses amount of biomass or if I want to switch 
to biomass, I will need a one truck of biomass per day. And in the Lotske region, there is not this, th th there is not amount of biomass available in our region at all. I would burn all the biomass uh, available in central Poland. So that's that's a big challenge. So um, we believe that um, the green procurement of the regions uh, can be um, um, a way of leading by example. And we believe that LCA, LCC, it's the best tool to compare products and services, whether they are green or not. Um, we believe that uh, application of the LCA and green procurement will promote local production and uh, energy, energy and resources efficient manufacturing. Um, we believe uh, that to share with you a good, uh, our good um, experience how did we start doing the LCA, despite we are relatively small, we just um, joined the local technical universities who have been doing the LCA analysis as a part of a big project. So like we, in a way, volunteered. So it might be a good starting point for the regions to um, do some pilot projects of LCA analysis of local industries and local uh, companies. Um, yeah. Um, at the end of the day, what we've learned as a large exporter, uh, where we compete with various companies, that LCA can be used as a protection as from non-EU suppliers, mainly Chinese suppliers. So. Um, there was a lot of points. I didn't know how to prepare myself properly. And so I leave it here. Um, look forward to the questions sessions. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you very much, Jakob. Yeah, um, and well done there, having to, to work under such uh, such pressure. Yeah, it was uh, very interesting. Thank you very much indeed. Um, again, another reminder to everyone, the questions um, uh, are open in the in the chat window so um, as you're formulating questions you can answer them uh, enter them there and we'll deal with them um, after the last good practice the last of our speakers uh, for today um, and this is Alvaro Miranda um, hey. hello yes you can hear me okay Alvaro hello hello David hi I can already already, already see your screen I'm just going to introduce you uh, Briefly, um, Alvaro is going to be talking about uh, the <coughs> calculation of carbon footprint and the services of the Commonwealth of the region of Pamplona. Uh, Alvaro is uh, the director of um, uh, the head of climate change and strategic projects reporting directly to the to the CEO. OK, he's been working for nearly 35 years in regional and local sector. And at the moment, he's managing the um, climate strategy in this company. OK, so Alvaro, when you're ready. The floor Good is, is yours. Good morning. Can you see my presentation? Yes, we can perfectly. And we can hear you well too. Okay, take it away. Okay. Let's go. Well, well, uh, good morning, I say. Uh, in first place, I, I would like to, to present us. We we manage the the metropolitan area in the in the main city in Navarra. Navarra is, uh, as you know, the, one of the 70 regions in Spain. And we are formed by 50 municipalities, and we are 374,000 inhabitants. And we supply three important public services to this population. The integral water cycle, the municipalities solid waste collection and treatment, and then public urban transport. This is our, our work in this area of Navarra. Well, we are committed with a very important reduction in our carbon footprint. And um, we have a, go a goal that is to be carbon neutral in 2030, 20 years before the goal for the, the, the European community and for our country from Spain. Uh, you know that the, this goal is, is fixed in this moment in 2050 and we 
we expect to reach our proposal in 2030. Our starting po point was in the, in the year 2014 with 60,000 CO2 tons and our pathway at the moment is to size to change our position to preserve in our work during all these years and our current position is for 47,000 co2 tons we we have reduced our emissions in 22 percent during these five years well, we are the first local commonwealth in Spain that has obtained the three seals given by the national government. Uh, that is to, to calculate our uh, carbon footprint in, in the, during three years. The, the seal of calculated, the seal of reduced uh, is when you can demonstrate that you can reduce your carbon footprint for four, four years. And the last year we obtained the, the last, the, the third uh, seal is to obtain the, the balance in our division because we we obtained some uh, compensation for our for an, another project in Spain. And in Spain, uh, and there are more or less 10,000 uh, local entities, and we we were the first in, in Spain to obtain these these three seals from the national government. Well, what are we doing at, at the moment? Well, all of the electricity that we consume is green. All of our new buses are hybrid or moved by electricity. All of our new vehicles are electric or, or moved by gas. We promote the community composting and we are committed to a good recycling on organic matter with the help of the citizens of our area. These are the things that, that are we're doing at the moment. And what are we going to be by 2030? Well, we have to build a new municipal solid waste treatment center that we are doing this in the next in the next three years. Close our landfill in that we expect to close this in the 2023 change our urban buses fleet to be methane for 2022 to 2030 change our urban waste collector tax to be methane to 2022 to 2028 and plan new forests in our communities for 2021 to 2030. In Russian, our goal is, as I have said, to be carbon neutral by 2030. And the good practices to reach this objective for us are, in the first time, know your own carbon footprint, design the weight and the actions to reduce them, Convince to the public representatives, inform and involve your citizens, and keep the fort for years and years. This is our experience, and this is our the, for this we, we can expect to, to obtain our goal to 2030. Thank you. Um, I expect your questions. Thank you very much, Alvaro. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, so here we are. It's uh, ten forty-four. We've been through um, all seven of the good practices. Um, just a couple of questions before we um, move to the to the to the uh, last activity: the choose your favorite good practice um, activity. And this is the first question. You've probably seen it in the chat, but it's to uh, address to Alvin. Um, and the question is, have you thought through um, how to apply lessons learned in hotel building to the public sector and have public bodies shown any interest in it? Uh, as it was shown through my uh, example of good practice, uh, this hotel was constructed in the year of 2009. And in the last decade, of course, 
a lot of uh, activities have already been implemented that concerns this particular question. Uh, so next year, when all of you come to Slovenia, you will be able to meet state undersecretaries, okay, that did a lot of work in the past years, and all these issues were somehow implemented in the legislation regarding green procurement. So um, through, the, uh, through these instruments, uh, the uh, public authorities are able to ask from all those who participate in uh, tenders, in submitting tenders, that they have to, uh, let's say, um, propose technologies or items which are green, okay? So uh, in all these uh, public, uh, public tenders, uh, so now, uh, up to now, up to 30% of uh, uh, items uh, or that are bought by public authorities should be of so-called green character, okay? And there exists databases, okay, uh, through which, uh, from which, let's say, the suppliers are able to select products and propose them to the public authorities, okay? But regarding the other legislation, it, what we are doing, so we actually directly um, approach to the government officials at different ministries and through these activities, uh, of course it takes time, then ideas get implemented into the Slovene legislation. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. Um, and the same question was addressed to Jakob. Now he's answered this briefly. Jakob, are you, are you there? Yes. Yeah? Could you activate your, your video too? In fact, all of you, um, if, you're, if you have your video, so uh, so we can see each other. It's always nice to put a face, isn't it? The other panelists. Um, yes, Jakob, um, you've, you've given a very comprehensive answer in the chat window, but I'd, I'd just like to ask you to, to answer that orally, uh, if I may, um, making, uh, the, the, uh, well, expounding a little on the points that you've made in the chat. Uh, okay, so... Um... Hmm. Um, um, but what I would like to start with that we as the material supplier, uh, we have a very specific uh, view what on what happens on the market and uh, there is some talking but not much real interest. The only uh, green policies introduced in the form of, of, of green procurement we have observed in the UK and Norway, but uh, what we've observed that actually uh, there was a enormous space for fraud and enormous space for uh, invalid data submission. So, and we export to 40 countries. So, um, mm, yeah, that's that's what we see that's what we see uh, some talking not much doing thank you all right yes thanks yeah and and as you say in the chat there uh, the main driving factor in uptake um is energy efficiency requirement right in uh most of you eu countries right okay any other questions would anybody like to make any any comments before we move on no, I know uh, Alexandra, for example, doesn't have video. I can see Elsa, I can see Yolanda, um, Fritz. I I think you have a different icon. I, I don't know what's whether. Yes, Jakob, I can see you. And Alvaro, hi, Fritz is there. Hi. Okay, you need to move your camera up. There we go. Hi, hello, hello. <laughs> okay, and. That's, that's everybody, right? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, I believe what uh, Irene is, we're just taking a photograph, that's why. So big smile, everybody. <laughs> okay, um, thanks for that. Um, David, we... still, if I may, I still have to announce a few questions I got privately from, from participants, from attendees, and maybe we can think about that and we will discuss tomorrow in the third ses session, okay? Okay, um, as as you as you prefer. Yeah, I mean, I uh, unfortunately we can, uh, we can uh, continue uh, tomorrow on that. But this is very really interesting because this concerning the good practices and LCA and how they could be implemented in regions. 
how to start because some regions they have already implemented and some regions they are struggling and they don't know how to start with the strategies with the national legal act or with the, some other initiatives as was mentioned by Jakob with pilot projects or something like that so yeah. it would would be nice discussion tomorrow I think uh, in the peer review session or or during the third session Excellent. That's a, that's a great suggestion. Thank you very okay. much. Uh, thank you very much, Alanta. Yeah, um, we'll bear that in mind. Uh, Raul is, is uh, sitting to my left um, and he's going to be leading the peer review, so I'm sure he'll uh, he'll bear that in mind for tomorrow. OK, uh, now I'm hoping that there'll be a, a link appearing in the chat window now to uh, to the final activity. Um, for the moment, we, we can't sit it. Irene. OK, either. Can, can, all participants. <laughs> it's going to be like yesterday. We had a, a link um, which will take you to a page where you can input some data. And yes, it's just appeared. Perfect. Okay. So open your chat window. Uh, remember, you have the controls at the foot of your screen in the center. There's a little speech bubble which will open the chat window if you don't already have it open. Uh, click there and you can put in your data and already some data is appearing um, I don't want to disturb my current uh, layout of windows and, and so on I'm not going to click on it I'm going to wait for it to arrive and then I'll just briefly comment it for you okay I can see you working away okay yeah the question which is the good practice you consider more interesting for resource efficiency. And now the second question, uh, which is the good practice you think can be best applied to public policies, um, which is the big challenge at the center of this project. Okay, so we can see the <clears throat> the content has just uh, appeared on my screen. Um, and here we can see, okay, the, the um, calculation of the carbon footprint um, here, in, here in Pamplona um, has 35% and the um, Jakob's uh, reduction of carbon emissions um gp6 also 30 percent um and then interest too in energy and resource efficiency in the hotel industry in the construction center uh, sector generally and at the other end we have um uh, yolanda's opening presentation on uh, water-based solvents um choices for for industry um and also resource efficient land use now this is dynamic it's it's changing all the time so this is by no by no means definitive okay and in terms of applying to public policies again um we can see that uh gp6 um has provoked a lot of interest among the attendees today um but also uh the uh initial presentation on comparative lca for water-based and solvent-based primers and efficient land use from uh, from Finland and also the Pamplona Ocean. Okay, so really interesting, a little snap poll. Okay, um, I think we can, we're back on the main screen now, um, we can draw things to a close there as, as we predicted. Um, I don't know if anyone would like to make any final comment before closing. Um, no, okay. Um, Thank you very much, Fritz. Yes, I was waiting for you. Okay. <laughs> I'm here, David. I'm here. Very, very interesting set of uh, presentations. So, thank you, everyone. Uh, I just want to briefly respond to Yolanta's question of, of how to start and how to implement many of these policies. One of the things that really helps, and most regions do it, is they produce an annual report. Now, a number of regions around the world have included their sustainability performance in their annual regional report. 
is to report to their citizens. And a number of the regions have included uh, their resource efficiency, their sustainability performance in these reports. So I would suggest that this is an excellent way in which most regions are actually able to, to move to become accountable for the good practices that they're implementing by showing it to the public in their annual reports. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed, Fritz. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, so let's uh, let's draw the session to a close. We're we're a little late. It's uh, four minutes to eleven, um, but it's been really really interesting. Thank you very much for the speakers, um, for all of to all of the speakers. Um, again, we have one or two little. Uh, glitches along the way, but um, thanks especially to those who managed to uh, keep things moving even in the face of, uh, of a few tech difficulties. Tomorrow uh, is the last day of this three-day event and we'll be making virtual study visits to two companies, um, both here in Nawara, uh, Agralco, who are dedicated to transforming and valorizing byproducts in the production of wine, and Biosasun, who use olive trees to make high quality, ecologically produced olive oil and related polyphenol rich health products. And both of these companies, um, one in person and one uh, via video, um, and then later in person will uh, describe their experiences of contributing to policy change, uh, working on resource efficiency, and explaining how the use of LCA has helped them in decision making. Okay, and then the final session, as Yolanda was saying uh, before, will be uh, there'll be a peer to peer review led by Raul Salanueva, our project lead here in Navarra. Okay, and with the contribution of the external experts. You'll notice in the chat window, Irene again, my colleague here, she's put in the, the link to the web page. Um, and remember, you can follow the project activities there. And as Fritz um, mentioned earlier too, Sandra is uploading document summaries of proceedings of, of each day. Um, and also you can look us up on Twitter if you haven't already done so and follow the activities on Twitter. And um, I think that's pretty much all for today. So thank you very much and hope to see you tomorrow. Goodbye from me. Bye bye. Goodbye, see you tomorrow. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. You tomorrow. Thanks, thanks for sharing the session. Bye bye. Yes, bye bye. Hey, everyone.